All right, guys, so this is going to bring you up to date on what's going on with Quadriga CX. Now, Quadriga CX was one of the two main crypto exchanges based in Canada. And um, definitely some strange things have happened in the, in the last little while. Basically, Gerald Cotton was the, was a CEO and he died apparently of Crohn's disease uh, in back in December 2018 uh, on a trip to India. Now, most people don't die of Crohn's disease. It's not one of those things. And he was relatively young. Uh, so that right there has led some people to think that possibly his death has been faked. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting, but right now, um, they have over a hundred thousand users, um, that have been affected and they're out about 250 million Canadian in, uh, in crypto and fiat. Okay. Uh, so there have been some, some strange things going on. Uh, there is a death certificate, uh, which is yeah so there, there is a death certificate that uh, has been published um, so it's 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 kind of it's kind of strange but the interesting thing about it is that leading up to this time um, there have been uh, you know some anomalies with being able to withdraw uh, crypto. Um, now, since he he passed away in December, um, I was able to move some of my Quadriga coins out, uh, but I didn't move all of them. And now the the whole site is 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 gone. So you can't log in. Um, and basically, Ernest and Young uh, has taken over control of this as they're looking to find the coins um, and apparently they're on a, a, a cold cold storage but there are some definite questions about that so they've actually filed for credit uh, protection to give them an extra 30 days to try to resolve this so one of the problems with crypto is you know back to the Mount Gov scandal is that you know you do have a level of trust with these companies and there's a couple of of things that are that are pretty interesting here um so some of its funds are, are held in fiat um but apparently no one can access these cold wallets uh, so they were supposed to be multi-sig wallets. Uh, in 2005, he said that that uh, the exchange used multi-signature wallets, so that you know multiple parties can control the uh, the wallet's private key. So in that scenario, two parties would have to sign a transaction before it have have been approved. But apparently, no other Quadriga employees are able to sign off on these trans uh, on these transactions. So there's missing coins. Uh, the whole thing is frozen. The whole site. Uh, has been, they still have their Flavicon, but the whole site has been locked down. Um, I sent an email to this email address at, at Ernest and Young, and uh, it did bounce, um, which, you know, is another little wrinkle there. Um, but basically, yeah, I mean, it's not functional. Um, they do say that, that they will be able to uh, give trade records uh which obviously would be important for claiming losses later on, um, but it's it, it hasn't been um, right now. You can't even log in and and, and see what's uh, what's what's on the site. So there is a death certificate, um, and uh, yeah, I guess it was I guess it was a statement of death. Yeah, here we go. So here's a statement of death. Uh, from uh, J.A. Snow Funeral Home in, um, in Nova Scotia. Um, yeah, so right now there's a whole bunch of questions and not a lot of answers with this. So um, last point, 
is it's interesting that he redid his will uh, about 12 days before he died. And he made provisions for the dogs and, you know, that sort of stuff, the, uh, the real estate. But it's striking that he made no provisions for uh, the cold storage that he was in control of and what would happen to that if, uh, if, if he passed away. So um, his wife is the only beneficiary and the executor of, of the estate. Uh, wouldn't be too fun to be in her shoes right now, but we're going to see what happens. So that's kind of all we know for now. And uh, I'll keep you updated with what's going on with Quadriga, um, which was based out of Vancouver.